guys. Welcome back to Diaries of a Working Couple. I'm Jamie. And I'm Chris. And when we're recording this, it is it is right after Amazon Prime Day. So I hope that didn't hit you guys too hard. It hit us hard. It has not hit us hard. Chris just thinks it has. I saw some big packages show up to the door. Okay, I had a basket delivered and you can't really compress those like you could anything else so yes it came in a big box because it had to be in a big box i've never seen a basket like that okay the basket i ordered is one that almost looks like it's a two-tier basket it's one that goes on the steps so that way you can put things in the basket when they need to go upstairs because right now we have just bags hanging on our banisters of things that need to go upstairs. And instead of having these trashy bags just kind of on the banisters, we can throw things in the basket and it has a convenient handle. So you can just pick up the handle when you're going upstairs and take everything up with you. I think leaving things at the bottom of the stairs to take upstairs is a problem that I don't have because when I have something that I want to put upstairs, I just walk upstairs and put it there. That's fair for you. When I get into my cleaning modes, I have to put things in piles. Otherwise, I will get distracted in other rooms. For example, I have cleaning supplies like for our carpet for shampoo, like for shampooing the rugs and everything. And they are currently in the bags because they need to go upstairs. That's where we usually have to do everything. But I know if I took them upstairs right when I had them and I was like, okay, I'm like in my cleaning mode. These need to get off the table. I'm, they got to go upstairs. I'm going to put them in this bag to take them upstairs. If I go upstairs and I start working on something upstairs or I just lay down and take a nap and that's not super productive. So if I stay downstairs, stay upright, then I keep cleaning. I get it. Makes sense. I'm a little disappointed though because on Prime Day, I thought I got you a cute Christmas gift. I got you one of those little octopus that are happy and then you can flip it inside out and they're <clears throat> sad and I thought that you would think it was really cute. And unfortunately, we happened to acquire one when we were bowling with your old coworkers. Well, not unfortunately, because you definitely got it at a way better bargain than what I paid on Amazon. But still, it took away one possible Christmas gift that I had for you. But that's okay, because that's just one extra Christmas gift you can get for me now. That's true. We should do an episode on christmas and like how we approach buying things for each other i think holidays in general because that i think that would be good plus also my like love language i guess it's not how i receive love but like how i show love is i get people gifts so christmas is usually really dangerous around me oh i know um this year for christmas we are setting a price limit between the two of us we can only spend two hundred dollars on each other and that's another reason why prime day is clutch prime day and black friday are going to be probably the two craziest quote-unquote holidays in this house just because i have a limit on what i'm allowed to spend at christmas and so i gotta get everything at the best price possible well for me at least well, I mean, I think that's a good a good rule to have in general. Yeah. Anyway, we were getting pretty off topic. But I did want to mention that we are not ordering dinner tonight. So we are making tacos at home instead. And I am starving. Yes, he is. He kept saying, hey, I'm hungry. What are you doing for dinner? And I said, I don't know. Do you want to order? Well, I have stuff for tacos. So we let our dog decide, and twice she decided tacos at home. Jamie decided to run the test twice just to make sure Lava was sure 
that we were going to eat tacos. Because I don't want to make tacos. Because I'm the one who ends up making dinner when we eat dinner here. I can make the tacos if you want. <laughs> I made you dinner the other night. You did. Which was a surprise. That was that was delicious. Handmade pasta. I sat there kneading that shit for 20 minutes. Uh, that was definitely impressive. That is not what I anticipated. Um, I did not make the sauce, though. That's okay. I didn't expect you to. Um, I was texting Chris saying how I just had a really bad day at work. I was super frustrated. And I... It started like earlier in the morning and I just kept texting him throughout the day. I'm done. I just want to come home. I'm so tired. So around five o'clock, I think it was, he called me or texted me and said, don't worry about dinner. I'm taking care of dinner. And I came home and he had fresh made fettuccine, Alfredo sauce from a jar, which I can't blame him because... Alfredo sauce is hard to make from scratch. Garlic es- Alfredo sauce. Especially when it's his first time trying to do everything on his own. Usually I'm in the kitchen helping with the, the multiple pots going. Yeah, but, it's a little out of control. But he did that and had some garlic bread and some chicken to put in there too. It, it worked was, out pretty well. It was very extravagant for what I expected because nine times out of ten it's usually... Hot dogs and mac and cheese, chicken nuggets, or pizza. I tried a little harder this time. I'm not complaining about any of the former, though. I just want to make that clear. Okay. I was going to say, they are all delicious. Yeah, you can't beat hot dogs and mac and cheese. That's just like a classic in this household. It is. It's a staple, especially when he learned I grew up not eating hot dogs mixed into the mac and cheese. Just, it was hot dogs... And then a side of mac and cheese. That's weird. Yeah. He thought that was a little strange. I thought nothing of it because when we had hot dogs and mac and cheese, that's what it was. It was hot dogs on a roll or a piece of bread and mac and cheese like on the side. Anyway. So I think for today, we're going to talk about something that Jamie and I have never talked about before, but it came up the other night when we were bowling with our coworkers. Jamie brought up the idea of possibly going back to school for her MBA. So I was talking to one of my old coworkers, one of my friends. She is currently going through pharmacy school. I think she's in her third year. We'll be starting her third year. And with her program, her school offers a PharmD MBA combination degree. So in the summer, I believe it's in the summer, she's taking her MBA courses. And then during the regular school year, she's taking her regular pharmacy classes. But that way, when she graduates, she has both pharmacy and MBA. I want to preface this by saying this girl does everything under the sun. She works full time, does this, does everything else. She gets up at like 4 a.m. to go to the gym. She's just a remarkable human being that puts most people to shame. Um, so just watching her go through all this and do everything, I've, I've toyed with the idea of going back for like MBA or some sort of a business degree, because now in my current position, I'm at a smaller independent pharmacy. So it's not a big box chain like CVS, Rite Aid, Wal- uh, Walgreens, Walmart, It's just a mom-pop place that's been there for like 30 years. Um, My boss is the owner of it, and I feel as though having more of a business background would help me improve the store and also understand how to better approach certain scenarios versus just kind of going in all willy-nilly just with all my pharmacy knowledge, but not really knowing how to run a business. So circling back to your friend, you have to have a pharmacy, a doctor of pharmacy degree, right? To practice pharmacy, unless you're grandfathered in with the bachelors of... A bachelors of pharmacy, yes. So I could not... So her degree will be a doctor in pharmacy and an MBA? Yes. She will have two separate degrees. 
and it's in the same time period that your degree was like three or I guess it was four Four years years on top of your four-year undergrad yes wow and it's it's a very intensive program because that's a lot to go through um a lot of classes in very very different subjects does that program miss out on anything that your program had like does she still do rotations yeah and everything so she has to do those rotations Ippies and appies are non-negotiable. I know certain schools do them differently. So ours were built into our curriculum every Tuesday during the first semester or whatever. I would go from one to four to whatever pharmacy it was and meet with my preceptor. We'd kind of go over everything. I would do whatever projects I had and then I would come home. But that was seen as like a course for me during that time. Now for her, her Ippies, I believe, are full day instead of just being three hours. But she has to, like, she's starting one in August and it is like a full day, multiple days a week. But it's only like a two or three week rotation instead of being a full semester long. Is she still in class then? No, she's not. Okay. So her Ippies occur outside of class time, whereas ours was built in like it was a class. Interesting. And all this happens over the same time period. That's wild. Mm -hmm. And she's taking business classes. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, She is... She's dedicated. (laughs) Interesting. Yeah. So, you know, I was a little surprised when you brought up the idea of possibly getting an MBA because I know that you are very, um, I don't know. We, we talk about, you know, starting a family very soon, pretty often. And you seem to be very stressed with just work alone. And then to add a child or multiple children and an MBA at the same time seems like a lot of stress. It's a lot of extra work, but I feel as though when I was in school, you know, between volleyball and all the classes and doing all the extracurriculars, I feel as though... I had better time management skills because I knew I had to get so many things done and everything had like a strict deadline. Whereas now, like today, I had today off. So I got up, fed lava, played on my phone, and then I took a nap until like 12, 31 o'clock. If I had more strict deadlines for a lot of these these things, I feel as though I would be able to manage my time better. I wouldn't be as, oh, it's fine. I can go take a nap or I can go play on my phone for like four hours because I knew I wouldn't be able to. Plus, I, generally speaking, I do enjoy learning. Like, I enjoyed school. Like, I... Bear with me. I did not enjoy a lot of the people I went to school with. I a lot of drama. I was never like a super popular kid. That was that was just not me where I'd go to school so I could see my friends. But I did enjoy learning a lot. Luckily, due to COVID, I feel like a lot of schools now offer online classes. Um, and specifically, I know that like my master's degree a lot of the lectures are hosted on youtube or i think like udacity is a educational site where you know universities upload lectures and stuff so it's possible that you could take classes to give yourself the education that you think you need for potential like, you know, business interactions you may have at this independent pharmacy without necessarily getting a degree or spending money to, 
you know, get a degree? So I've thought about that, but I know, so I'm a very science-minded person. I am very, like, math-minded. I am very good with, these are the numbers. This is what we're doing. These are the facts. I've never been very good with, um, like, English, language arts, anything that's kind of more situational, more subjective. And I feel as though business, while not being like English is also like another subjective ish type of subject or course or subject just because however you decide to run your business kind of opens up doors for how you can do things and how to adjust things and instead of just being like okay here's the equation on how to run a successful business and I'm just not it's not something that comes very easily to me so I feel as though so example when I was in pharmacy school over the summer they gave us the option to take courses from different pharmacy schools online Mm, excuse me that um so I did one from took one from University of Florida. I think that one was a veterinary medicine um, elective. And then the other one I took, I think it was from Mercer. And that one was essentially how to run your own independent pharmacy. But it was a very... Wow, okay? what are you doing? You okay down there, Bubba? Sorry. Our dog is, is currently using my... Uh, my chair as her her personal back scratcher yeah she's just really digging her face and her back into the side of my chair so i apologize if you hear her snorting um what was i saying oh i took a course at mercer online about how to run your own independent pharmacy because i've always thought that was like that was my goal that was my dream that was my goal i wanted to work at an independent, run my own pharmacy. And I know today's day and age, that's very difficult to do. And I remember going through that course and just nothing made sense to me because I was not a business-minded person. So I would sit there with like the books and the lectures and everything and I would have to read through things like three times because it was just not something that came naturally to me. So I know if I did take stuff online, it would, or, you know, watch classes or lectures from other courses where I'm not actually in touch with the professor. I can't just sit down and talk with someone about it. It would be a lot more difficult for me to understand the material, comprehend it, and be able to actually use it versus just kind of knowing it and having it go in one ear and out the other the next week. I understand what you're saying. I just worry about your stress levels. I mean, I know how stressed you get about work. And it's not always that bad. But sometimes you have a bad a bad stretch. And, you know, I like me being in my master's for the last three years, like, it just sucks when you're done with work and then you have to do more work. And you have to because you have deadlines. It just, it totally drains you. Yeah, I I know, like, when I was working through school, it was a little easier because I interned while going through pharmacy school, and I could, I can't, I don't want to say I could pick my hours, but when people were like, hey, can you cover XYZ, I didn't have any issue saying no, that's a lie. I did have issues saying no because that's just who I am as a person. But Terrible negotiator. Listen, okay? I everyone has their faults. Mine that I'm working on is how to say no to be able to do things that I want to do. If I had to describe your biggest weakness, I would say that it's you care too much and 
I, I forget what I was going to say for the second one, but it had to do with just, like, not being able to say no. I I'm mean, a people like, pleaser. Yeah. I'd... Seriously, you are. Um, but, you know, sometimes you got to give yourself a break, too. Yeah, I know. And that's that's part of, I don't want to say my problem, but I know that for, like, through school, I didn't have to to worry about being over scheduled because if I needed to I could be like no I can't work these days because I have exams or the pharmacists that I would be working with they're like it's okay like bring your study stuff in when we slow down like we'll sit here and talk about whatever your exam is coming up and so they would help me study or they just let me sit in the corner and kind of read through my notes, which was super helpful. But I know, like, now I'm working 40 hours a week. It's not like I can just call into work and be like, hey, I'm going to be a couple hours late today. I just have an exam I have to take for this online master's class that I've opted to do and has nothing to do with my current position. Your hours are pretty rough, too. Like, you work... 10 hour i guess you do four tens i do four tens but compared to what i used to work it's not as bad because i used to have three twelves in a row yes and your schedule's a lot more consistent my schedule's more consistent i used to have so right now i have like a 20 minute drive to work i work 10 hours and then i come home which It seems like a lot for someone who just works five eights and is used to that. But on the other hand, it's nice because I get three day weekends. And if I, I really enjoy my coworkers because if I need to switch shifts, I can. That's something that people in office jobs don't really understand. That if you like, if you're in an office job and you call out, your work's still there tomorrow. It's not like people are gonna be coming in like, oh my gosh, like he's not here, like we can't do anything. Teachers, doctors, pharmacists, people like that. Even if you work regular retail, um whether it's in like fast food or like you're at some retail store it's different because if you call out they either need to find someone to take your shift or depending on your position you're down a man and everyone who's still there at work that decided to show up feels like they got screwed royally or in the position of a pharmacist or like a managing doctor at a practice or anything like that, you, if you don't have, or if you don't show up, nothing happens. Or like teachers, teachers don't find a sub and they call out. Who knows what's happening to that class? Pharmacy, I would have to find another pharmacist to come in. Otherwise that store is not opening. I feel like school districts and stuff have substitute teachers on hold for that reason, though. Or, like, well, I mean, your old job was a corporate chain, so they could always pull somebody from a different store if they really had to. And and they have. They have. There have been times when things happened, our scheduler wasn't able to cover everything or people just left and said i'm done with this place and quit without notice how many people quit on the job when you were at your old location honestly not enough no but seriously like how many when you were there how many times have you seen an employee walk out because they were just so frustrated pharmacist wise none i meant tax I mean, Text. Yeah. I have not personally seen any, but I have definitely heard stories from other stores in our district. Yeah, and you've gotten texts like saying I'm not coming in the work or I quit. Or oh, stuff I've like gotten. That. There was a time when you and I were at the movies, and I came out, and I had a text message. This technician had sent me a book of just yeah, I know. Like 
essentially what happened is she asked off for like two weeks around Christmas, about three days before she left for Florida. Obviously, the request got denied because, number one, the schedule was already out. But number two, that's the busiest time of the year where everyone's trying to take off at the same time. So you have to get your request in early. The request was denied. It was during a very short stint where I was acting manager at that pharmacy. And I was like, listen, you can't, you have to come into work. I can't approve this. And then she's like, okay, I quit. This is a total opposite situation of a Dwight Schrute, too. Like, you did not want to be acting manager. No, no, I did not. I did not ask for it. I was never told that I was going to be acting manager. They pulled our manager for some irrelevant project. And we kept asking. We're like, oh, well, who's going to be acting manager? Who's doing the schedule? Who's doing this, that, and the other? And the week before she left, I asked. I was like, well, who's who's taking your place? And she's like, so-and-so didn't talk to you? I said, no. She's like, they're putting you up. I was like, oh, no, they're not. <laughs> But oh yes, they did. Yeah. All right. So I think we're we're getting a little bit off topic now. But, but so yes, work can be stressful. But compared to what I was working, where I had to drive an hour to get to work, I would work twelve plus hours because I'd always end up staying at least an hour late. Then have to drive back and do that three days in a row. Yeah, four tens is not the easiest. However, comparatively. I have no problem with my current schedule. The only problem I have is that we don't eat dinner until like 8, 8.30 at night because we don't start making it till I get home. Yep, my tummy be hurting. <laughs> well, dear, you can always... Learn how to cook? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I wasn't going to say learn how to cook. No, I'm saying I should probably learn how to cook. Anyway, so going back to the NBA... You know, you're you're in a position now where uh, it's in a, it's an independent pharmacy. It's a lot smaller. There's a lot more business interactions that you could be a part of. Let's think about you know a five year plan in the future. What what could you see like, you know, if you decided to go with an MBA, and you know within five years we want to have at least one child, uh, preferably two right or three if you ask jamie i'm nodding you can't see it but i'm nodding i want three chris says we can have two and a dog so that's pretty much three children lava counts as a child because she doesn't stop peeing on the carpet oh my gosh anyway so like let's think about the future here and is it you know think about it is it is it going to be maintainable to, it... to hold all these things together and I'm not, like, trying to push you away from doing whatever you want to do. I want you to, like, if you want to get an MBA, like, let's do it. But... So, th it depends. Because if I get my MBA, if I go back to school, or even if I try and do more business classes and focus more on business classes so I'm able to help out at the store, I would be doing that with the goal of being more integrated into helping run the store versus just a staff pharmacist who lets my boss kind of take care of all the business stuff and I feel as though so I know that he wants me to eventually transition into the pharmacy manager role so he can focus on more business ownership roles versus having to manage the entire staff of the pharmacy plus do all the schedules plus work on all the business stuff like He's trying to get a plumber in to fix the bathroom in the store because it's it's a mess. It's a mess. and I can so imagine being the pharmacy manager, which I've seen you go through at a store, you know, which was very stressful. That on top of owning the business and having to deal with building maintenance and, you know... All, all the other stuff that comes along with being a business owner, you know, there's it, probably tons of paperwork and, you know, it's you got to do all the taxes and everything. Yeah. I mean, you know, CVS is, they have these corporate they have employees offices to and handle business. all this. Yeah. yeah. 
So whenever and whenever you go to any corporate chain, any retail, that's what they have. They have departments set aside specifically for that because they are a business in addition to a pharmacy. Whereas we are we are both, but we don't have any department we can just send things out to. So he's we're dealing about with payroll. He's dealing with making sure he's talking to our landlord because we rent the building. So he has to talk go through our building owner to even get our bathroom fixed to make sure that he can get someone in and who he's bringing in isn't going to be a problem for our building owner. And then when you when you're dealing with that in addition to trying to hire more technicians and go through all that stuff, that's a lot. And I know he wants me to uh come into the pharmacy manager role eventually and I think that would be good but I also want to be able to understand why he's doing certain things and be able to contribute more to the business that's my goal with the MBA however five years down the road we have a couple little ones running around that's when we have to think okay am I going to be a stay-at-home mom Or am I going back to work as soon as I can? Are we going to put kids, going to put kids in daycare? That's a good question. So that's, I. Like, I don't think we've really had that chat fully either. And we haven't. And it's very different. I know your mom was a stay at home mom. She wanted to be a stay at home mom. Like they, you know, they probably could have afforded having child care i mean back then child care wasn't as expensive as it is now child care can you know be around i think i heard a stat of like 20k or 30k a year or something for a child now so it's definitely a lot more expensive nowadays but she wanted like that was her goal you know and i think that's something that my mom and dad talked about when they got married was that my mom wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. I would love to be a stay-at-home mom. I would I would give up everything to have a family and be able to be there for my kids and when they forget their lunch, be able to go drop it off at school and do all of those things. But I also understand that if I were a stay-at-home mom, once the kids started going to school, I would be bored as all get out. And so I would end up either volunteering or going back for a job. I know when my youngest brother started back in kindergarten, my mom became a TA at our elementary school. And you would have to stay up to date with your CEs. That's, that's what, are, not... what are CEs? Yeah, might... So CEs are continuing education. Um, some... Some professions have them. I know medical healthcare does. Probably anything you need a license for. I think that's what it is. I, I believe teachers also have to. Um, I know nurses have to, doctors. But it's just, it's literally just additional courses to keep you up to date on everything to keep your license active. Yeah, there's plenty of part-time pharmacy jobs that are probably, you know, would be available when we got there. But who knows? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just, it's, that's the other part of it. Like, do I go and go through all this for an MBA if I don't end up using it, number one? Number two, if it carries through and I'm still working on all that stuff, when we do have little ones, that's going to be a whole nother mess, to put it lightly. And the cost could be significant. And that's the other thing, because I know... So Chris's master's degree that he's going for, he gets reimbursed by work, which is nice because it is related to his current job. But each one of his classes is like a couple hundred. It's cheap. $800 a class after all the fees and everything. It is a very affordable program. So I'll put in a little pitch for Georgia Tech. But if you're going for a computer science degree, they have an awesome program. I know my boss went to Georgia Tech, too, along with one of my coworkers who's a beast. So 
um yeah georgia tech like 800 bucks a class it comes out to like eight thousand dollars you know, for a master's degree in computer science, which is super cheap. And, you know, work may reimburse it for you. I know that, like, my company provides X amount of dollars for a year. And luckily, because the classes are so cheap, I can take three classes a year and not have to pay a dime. I do have to put out the initial cash, but then I get reimbursed for it later. And there is one caveat to that is that by the time my last payment goes through, which is this course, actually, uh, I have to be at the company for five years past that in order to keep that benefit. If I leave the company before five years, then I guess that will be taken out of, you know, whatever pay they're going to pay me at the end, like paycheck or, you know, my vacation time or whatever they pay or whatever they give you if you leave. But yeah. Yeah. And I so pretty much my degree is covered. Yeah. So your degree is covered. It was kind of a no brainer for me. Which, and it makes sense. Even when your one course is relatively cheap, I know when I was looking at stuff for MBAs online, it was looking like it was going to be like a 20 or $30 or 20 or 30 grand investment. And I really don't feel like investing that right now. There's a few different ways to think about it. If it would bring you more satisfaction to be able to help with the business that you work for, then like that's one thing if you're thinking that you know you're investing 30 grand in this degree you're like it's got a really poor return on investment because you're not going to get paid any more for having that degree so it really just comes down to is it is that money like worth the satisfaction of being able to perform your job better and like the responsibilities that you can possibly take on like better than you know your current education status and that's that makes me think of another thing that i've like toyed around with is instead of doing an mba because my degree is not even in anything remotely business other than my um, electives that I took at school in undergrad. I have no business experience whatsoever. So I've also thought about, okay, well, if I want to learn, if I want to understand business more, I should just take community college courses. That just popped in my head, like, when you were like, oh, you know, I just thought of this, like, you know, yeah, community college. You could just get a bachelor's from a community college, too. Or even an associate's. Like, it doesn't have to be something super high-tech or fancy, but that'll at least lay the groundwork for business knowledge. That way, it's not like I'm investing a huge amount of time, money, energy into something that won't necessarily benefit me in the long run since we don't know what's going to happen once we have kids. So, and I mean, like I said, it'll lay the groundwork. I'll have a better understanding of what's going on. It's not like I'm going to be able to really give my boss some groundbreaking ideas. Another interesting thought about the community college classes is it might help you meet other people around this area to, like, make friends, too. You tell me I don't have friends? No, I'm not telling you that. But, like, you know, I grew up around this area. So I have friends Hmm. from high school that live, you know, only a few minutes away where everybody that you grew up with lives over two hours away. Everybody that you went to school with most likely moved away and if not then they're in the city so that's an hour away and you know your undergrad was probably an hour away from here too or pretty close yeah so like you know it's just it's a little different like 
your situation than mine. You know, I have a lot of friends from high school that live around here that I've been slowly introducing you to. But, you know, it's just another thing like, you know, joining a sports league, but you're going to college to, one, pursue something that you think will help your career. And also, you might meet some people out of it. People with similar similar goals. That's possible. Honestly, the thought of trying to make friends and meet new people is enough to... Like, that's so much energy for me for one day. I really got to gear myself up for that. So, that's the one downside of if I do community college. That means I would likely be going in person. I would actually have to meet people, and that's that's a lot. Whereas if I do anything online, I don't actually have to meet people. Not saying I don't like people. It's just it takes a lot out of me to put on that social face and try to make small talk with people that I don't know. I kind of miss meeting people from school classes. Like now in my master's, I don't talk to anybody a lot of students create these study groups and stuff like that. I never really need help with the academic part of school. So, like, I just do everything myself and I don't worry about it. But, like, I remember in undergrad going to our classes. It's just like as kind of like a camaraderie. Like you know, you're all suffering through the same stuff together and it kind of helps like bring you together a little bit. And it's like, I think it's like an easier way of making friends. It's, it's definitely easier, especially when, like you said, like if you join a sports team or anything like that, it brings you all together with one commonality, whether it's a sport, whether it's a class that you have to take. And it, helps you meet people but literally just talking about this right now I can feel my heart rate rising at the thought of trying to go to class and meet new people and doing something that's so out of my comfort zone you're can, already getting stressed out I can feel my blood pressure rising right now just See, thinking which brings about me it. A, this is a perfect you know round circle here because I was saying that I'm worried about your stress levels <laughs> And the fact that you're already getting stressed with us just talking about school is something that worries me. But that's the thing. It's not that I'm getting stressed out about the class itself. I'm getting stressed out at the thought of me having to go meet new people. Me having to go out and and socialize with people that I don't know that could be very unsavory characters. They could be wonderful people. I don't know. But the unknown freaks me out, whereas if it's a class that I'm taking online, I don't have to go out and meet these people and fake small talk and pretend that I'm interested in whatever is going on because I'm not very good in social situations if I don't know people. Once I know people, I'm fine, but getting to know people, holy cow, that's a whole nother story. Speaking from experience, online classes tend to just get so boring after a while that it's hard to pay attention to learn. Like, I remember when I first started my master's, I would watch every lecture and attempt to read what I'm supposed to read. But, you know, I never read all the readings that teachers assign because it's ridiculous. But now on my last class, I'm just doing the minimum I could do to skirt by, which... To me, it's like, am I am I actually taking away all that I'm, you know, here to take away? Probably not, but I'm just trying to get the damn thing over with. <laughs> That's fair. And I do remember in pharmacy school, there were a couple classes that I just could not sit through. I tried to go to every class, but there were some where I just, I really struggled going to the class whether it was the timing of the class or the material of it I I know there were a couple that I would just end up watching lectures back later on you don't get the same professor student relationship on an online class than you do in person as well like right now if I have a question for the professor 
or just a question about the course content, I post on a discussion board. And most likely, if an instructor replies, it's a TA. I think the professor themselves only have to do a few office hours a semester so like you you don't even get to interact with the professor it's like they record lectures from you know probably five years ago and then you know maybe they join a few office hours or something but it's not like the same connection that you have with an in-person class but i feel like that's also different because you're at a very large state school you're not at a smaller school so my youngest brother is getting his master's through johns hopkins and he has man okay they're not mandatory office hours but like you get extra credit for going to office hours and i thought it was required so it was explained He understood it as required as it was explained the first office hours or however it was approached um, or introduced to them. So when he went to that first set of office hours, he asked the professor, was like, are these actually mandatory? Because that's kind of not fair to those of us who work 40 plus hours a week. Like my brother does. He'll, He'll pull like 60 or 70 hour a week sometimes. And... The way the professor explained is they're not required, but when you go, it's noted and you get extra credit or extra points or whatever it is. On- they probably use it to like round your grade, right? If you're, you know, sitting on a borderline and they see that you were trying to go to the office hours and stuff like that, they may use that to. I know. could definitely see that, but it's the professor that holds the office hours every time. It's not some ta well that's what my 800 dollars is getting me that you know, i think the price difference between georgia tech and johns hopkins is significant I, I think it's because you're at like a very very large state school where if you go if you take online classes from a smaller school you might not have that same experience where you're only getting responses from TAs and I really kind of think stuff. it has to depend on what kind of student you are too because I'm a student that doesn't go to office hours or anything for help. I'll just sit there and smack my head against a screen for hours while I'm trying to figure it out. So like I've only been to maybe one office hours out of my 10 classes that I've taken so far. I never did office hours, but I I would go talk to my professors if I ever needed help in undergrad and grad school. I would just be like, send them an email, say, hey, you available for a meeting at this time? I want to go over our exam or I don't understand X, Y, Z, or I just have a couple extra questions about this. I think my undergrad, I did go to some office hours just because there was problems in other Uh, other areas of studies like things like chemistry and stuff like i'm i'm not i just don't like other classes that aren't comp sci related i don't know yes you made that abundantly clear to your one teacher i did my damn what what class was that that like sociology sociology yeah i took sociology that sounded like a degree that or not a degree a class that i could just you know kind of breeze through because i had some other hard classes and this teacher required tons and tons of reading and a lot of essays that had long page requirements so i went up to the professor at the end of the class and i was just like excuse me like I'm a computer science student and I have some very hard classes this semester. I'm really focusing on those. And I said that I don't have all this time to read all this stuff that you're assigning and to write these super long essays. Pretty much I just told her like, hey, could you grade my stuff easier? Which is a terrible strategy to 
I would not recommend that for anyone who's thinking about going to talk to a professor. Do not go up to them and say, in however many words you want to, I don't care about your class. It's, it doesn't end well. Pretty much I was telling her that I don't care about this subject at all. But she didn't take that too well, believe it or not. I can't imagine why. Yeah, she is very about sociology, which I could care less about. So anyway, the conversation did not go too well. She still graded all my papers like normal. I think I ended up with a B, but I'm pretty sure I sent some of those essays to my mom to have her fluff them up. I used to do that all the time because I can't. I'm just very scientific with how I write things. I write things straight to the point. I can't add all this. Like, the fact that I'm getting A's on these papers and I literally handed them to my mom to fluff them for pages, meaning that she added pages of meaningless content and I got a good grade, means that she should just drop the page requirement so that, you know, my initial paper would have met those requirements. I don't know. I we're going so off topic, but are. I hate sociology. Like <laughs> that, like that was a terrible class to bring up because I have a real beef with them. Yes, but again, it it goes back to being able to talk to the professor versus just kind of being a number on a screen or in a classroom where you don't need that or you don't take that one on one time where you try and talk to your professors and and get understanding because I like I said I like learning I like learning new things and I like understanding things and that was my first year in pharmacy school that was the absolute worst because there was one class I could not for the life of me wrap my mind around and it no joke took me till after the midterm and I was I think I was getting a solid like C or D in this class up until it was like right after midterms and someone sat down and tried to ex- explain it to me and I just kept asking why and I finally found one of my classmates who really understood it and they're like oh this does x y and z and I was like well why how are we getting there? And they're like, okay, because of this. And when you can get to the, like the base root of everything of why we do things, it just made so much more sense to me. And I ended up pulling out like a B in that class, but I like understanding why we do things and how things work. So that's why I really enjoy pharmacy and science and math because it's very straightforward. There is a why we do things. There is a how things are done and that's the other thing I know that I'm gonna need if I do take any sort of business class I'm gonna have to be able to go up to someone whether it's a classmate or a teacher be like what is this where did this come from because if I don't understand it and if I can't give you the why I can't understand essentially why we're even dealing with it in the first place So after this conversation, what do you think? I think if I were to take business classes, I would likely do like a community college or a local, like a a small college, local college. And when would you want to start? That, I don't know. That is still up in the air because I know I don't want to start it soon just because this year last year and this year for us is the year of weddings and I know I don't want to have to deal with what you're dealing with right now with trying to get schedule projects and assignments around between vacation vacations and weddings and showers and everything under the sun Um, I know you had a lot of issues with that last year and like you ended up having to take a semester or a, a term off because you guys didn't have semesters. I don't we know. have semesters yeah. at Georgia Tech. Drexel, we had quarters, so uh, we usually called them terms, I guess. But yeah, uh, the the semester that our wedding fell into, I took that semester off. And if I didn't do that, I would have been done by now. But the wedding was stressful. And the honeymoon was great, and I don't regret taking off that semester because everything worked out the way it should, and it was great. 
anyway, so yeah, you're thinking I'm... community community classes. I think that's a good idea because you know before you go through the hassle of applying and and going for an MBA, you know, first of all, it might be fine to just do community classes, but I think that's a good cheap way and like minimal effort way to see if those classes interest you or if you're taking anything away from those classes or, you know, worst case scenario, the stress levels get too high. You're only out the credits for like one class and like, you know, you're not, you're not like suckered into like finishing out a whole degree or anything. And that's the other thing because I don't want to start it anytime soon as I'm still learning things with work. I'm still getting into the groove of everything. I only started like two and a half months ago. So yes, I am in a pretty good spot where I am at work, but I know with my boss wanting to give me more responsibility, I don't want to throw extra classes on top of that. I think it would be a good idea to reevaluate in like six months to a year, see where we're at and uh, go from there. You know, you don't know what it's going to what's going to change in the next year um, That's in terms true. of work or family or, you know, who knows? We might move to California. I don't think we'll be moving to California. Don't fret. Yeah, I don't think so. But anyway, I think that's a good place to wrap it up. You yeah, know? I think it's time for some tacos. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I am so ready. I'm very hungry. I was pretty hungry before we started recording. And then after you put down a large glass of Jack and Coke, your stomach gets a little more empty. Or, if, you know... I don't know hungry. if it's more empty. I think you just need something to soak up that jack. Yeah, I think so. So I think maybe we should make some tacos and then we could even record another episode. Man, we're getting wild. But Okay. Right. So thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. Bye guys. See ya.